Hi everybody, it's Russ from My Hammers 11. I hope you're all safe and well. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the little bell icon so you're notified of any time we put new videos up. We've got loads of guests coming up, loads of great guests, including today. Uh, you hopefully will recognise him. He played 63 times for the club, scored five goals, I believe. It's Hello, Kenny mate. Brown. Hi, Kenny. How are you, man? Hello, mate. Yeah, I'm very well, thanks. Absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on here. Um, Pleasure. It's, it's really great. Um, in terms of what we're doing, basically, we're interview Obviously, we've got nothing. We've got nothing to talk about in terms of live football at the moment. So it's all about memories about about West Ham, um, and obviously from your perspective, playing playing obviously for the Amers, um, and also you know talking about the the players you enjoyed playing with. Um, you know, obviously, you came to the club in early nineties, ninety one. Um, yeah, ninety one. Yeah. What was your sort of what was just your, your, sort of, your fond memories of, when, of that time? Because obviously you played five years, you scored you know, five goals, including that wicked goal against Man United, which cost them the league famously in 92. Um, but in terms of from you, you know, what's, what's your, sort of, um, your greatest memories of, of playing West Ham at that time? Um, well, initially, when, obviously when I first came, I came here on loan, yeah. uh, came into the club on loan. Uh, I was out of contract at Plymouth, but in, in them days... Um, as the club offered uh, to, uh, they offered me the same terms uh, as my previous contract. It wasn't; it was pre-Bosman, yeah. so I was still um, basically not contracted, but still associated with Plymouth. Um, went into pre-season, and, and Bill, uh, Bill had a chance meeting with my dad, and uh, there was injuries at West Ham, and he asked if I'd uh, obviously come to West Ham on loan. Um, I jumped at the opportunity. Fortunately, Plymouth agreed. Um, came in on the came in on the Thursday, uh, stayed at the the old Swallow Hotel, uh, had first training session on the on the Friday, and then we had the the Makita tournament uh, at Highbury on the on the Saturday and Sunday over that weekend. So it was a very quick introduction. Yeah. I had one training session uh, with the boys, um, but straight away I think that initially it was um you know obviously being a, a west ham supporter and with the history obviously with my with my dad there yeah. um it just felt like home he yeah. came in uh obviously the group of players were it was a it was a tight group mm. uh was welcomed straight away uh obviously bill bill was the manager of bonnie boyce uh, ernie gregory um uh, paul hilton tony carr you know that that was a group it's a little bit different now there's there's obviously uh it's a bigger backroom staff yeah, uh, a lot more numbers, uh, but then it was tight, and and the group was tight. Obviously, uh, predominantly British players, yeah. um, but it was just lovely to come into an into a, obviously an elite club and uh, and a club where obviously Dad spent many years. Yeah, because obviously you were you were born just as he was moving, wasn't he? He was even moving to Torquay, yeah. so you never would have obviously been around to see him play. Or but no, unfortunately. No, but obviously, uh, you know, you ended, you'd scored more goals than your dad, I think, in his career, and he scored oh, easily. About... Yeah, I think he scored two. I think yeah. I, I believe he scored two, so I took him quite comfortably. Yeah, and he did about, yeah. you know, he had 400 on appearance or 380 exactly. or so. Yeah, you did well in there. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's, you know, it must have been, you must have been, you know, you probably get this all the time, it must have been daunting, obviously, being a West Ham fan and, and having an association with your dad, you coming in, um, it must have been sort of, I don't know, don't that's the wrong word, but it's, it must be pressure on you. Um, I didn't feel it at the time. No, no I, I felt it was it was more excitement. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, the opportunity. Obviously, we were. I was in the old, um, what is now the championship. Yes. Um, with Plymouth, I had three seasons with them. Uh, played a lot of football and played and a lot really of games. Yeah, time. yeah, really enjoyed my time down there. Uh, but it was time to move on. It was. It's a long way from from anywhere. Yeah. Um, but obviously, coming into West Ham, you you come we're obviously coming into a into a, what is now the Premier League um, club. Obviously, with the history and um, and the, the levels obviously jumped up. You could tell that you know from that first training session on the Friday. Um, so it was more excitement. You know, yeah. I wanted to challenge myself. I was, I believe, I was twenty three at the time. So it was great for me to to come in and and obviously see how far I could get. And uh, luckily, I, I spent. Uh, really six seasons at West Ham, you know, obviously with a lot of players and yeah. um, and obviously with the, with a little change of management. But realistically, we had you know I only really played under Bill and Harry there, yeah. um, so there was a, there was stability there. 
Yeah. Um, but in in general, listen, it, I, it wasn't so much daunting. There was I didn't feel pressure. Yeah. I was welcomed straight away um, uh, from day one, and that, that obviously broke you know any any um, any doubts I had in my mind. Yeah. Um, and like I say, I had to go straight into a game on the Saturday. Yeah. yeah straight and, in uh, it. Yeah. And that was it. And you know, as footballers do, you just get on with it and, and play and. Fortunately, I, I got on well with the supporters and, and, and the group of players. So uh, yeah. it was quite a smooth introduction. Yeah, yeah. And as you said, straight back in, straight into a, you know, a tournament, it's like yeah, there's no dwell <laughs> time, isn't it? It's like literally, especially coming up from, from Plymouth, in, in you go. Absolutely. Top, like, yeah, you know, I see. <laughs> and, it, and it's one of those things, obviously, you know, when you went around that time, obviously, we, we went down, came up and, and, and stuff like that. There was, you know, as you said, there's, there wasn't, there was some, it was some, some fun times, definitely. Um, you know, obviously, I think because you, you, you sort of start, you were playing when I, as my, I started my West Ham sort of fan career. So it's like that sort of. <laughs> so I, I, so my greatest memories were like sort of ninety two, ninety three. We went up and the, the game, yeah. against, the game against uh, you know um, Sheffield United, yeah, Cambridge yeah. United, yeah, Cambridge United, and uh, yeah, Clive Allen, obviously the. I've never seen anything like that happen since, really. Yeah. Uh, I remember saying to one bloke, I remember I was, I was on the West Stand lower, and I remember so vividly this sort of rope ladder came flying from the top tier, and people were climbing down the rope ladder <laughs> before the stewards <laughs> took it absolutely mental. But obviously, you know, great memories and stuff like that. But, you yeah. know, in terms of, in terms of you obviously, your six seasons there, you obviously played with lots of great players. As I said, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get people sort of 11. So the type of players. So for a lot of people, obviously, it's the people, their fans' favourites, but you have a slightly different perspective. Obviously, players you played with and maybe you yeah. have a better association for. So it'd be good to get an idea of that. So, you know, if yeah. you pick your 11 that you played with, who, who would be in goal for you? Um, well, I only really played, even though we had keepers there, but, you know, at that time, everybody knows. Uh, Ludo was, yeah. the, was the main man. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, not just, you know, as a goalkeeper, obviously, you know, six foot five, six foot six. Um, so athletic. Um, you know, he used to be the first at the train, be the last in. Uh, but a lovely man. Yes. And um, and he was, he, he was, he was obviously that at my time there, he, he was the main number one keeper. Yeah. Um, I was fortunate enough, you know, the late uh, Tony Parks was there. Um, so, had, you know, Tony was a great character. Uh, played as played as some games, um, but like I say, uh, Ludo was yeah. was always the main main one. Yeah, it's not really was, hard, yeah, and, much and again, he was um, yeah, and not just because he was a number one, but he, he was a decent goalkeeper. Yeah, yeah. And, a, and a lovely guy, as you said. Yeah, yeah, and I think he's he's one of those guys who he comes up regularly in these conversations because for yeah, you know, people in my my era, I got sound, but people at that mid nine, <laughs> early to mid nineties, yeah. Ludo was Ludo, and it was you know, yeah, it was Ludo, um, yeah, yeah, yeah Ludo. absolutely. All right, so put Ludo between the sticks. What about uh, what about left back, Kenny? Left back? <laughs> it's not a hard one, is it? Um, <laughs> the the best player I've played with, um, no no question. Yeah. Obviously, Julian yeah. um, was when I first came. I, I remember when I first came in and. Julian was actually training with the kids uh, in the inside indoor gym mm. uh, and Bill. And at the time, the only way to view it inside, there was a little window at the entrance door. So Bill put his head to the door and you know, have a look through there. And there was obviously Julian was in there with a brace from basically his hip down to his ankle. Um, and he just said, you know, spoke so well of him. Yeah. Uh, and he just said, you know, when he comes back, you know, it, it changes the whole dynamics of the team. Yeah. Um, so came back, I played, you know, obviously quite a few games with him um, in place of him after he got suspended. Yeah. Uh, you know, he had a mad year, I think, where he yeah. kept getting sent yeah. off yeah. Uh, and I kept falling in at left back to, to take his place. But um, yeah, listen, he was the only real player uh, that you look at and, and, uh, he dominated games from from left back. You know, yeah. he, he created goals, scored goals, uh, and you always felt in the dressing room when he was when he was in the team, and you know he was sitting next to you. You always felt you had a chance. Yeah. Um, and I, I was close with him off the pitch, but first and foremost, he was a, he was a wonderful footballer. Mm. And you're right. There's not many people in any fullback position who could run a game from a fullback position, do you know what I mean? And get the fans off their seats. Um, it's, it's not the most glamorous position, as, as, you, as you know, Ken, in terms of that. But, 
you know, as you said, he's yeah, and he's just yeah. Everyone says the same thing, so I know. yeah, and, exactly. And, There's and nothing football. new you can say about Julian. You know, everybody no. knows. Anyone that that watched him knew his value to yeah. to the club, and you know, I think the the fans really bought into him, and you know, he loved all that. So it was it was um, yeah, he's outstanding left back. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, who's going to go? Who's going? Let's go right back. Kenny, who'd go in your right back? Um, obviously, apart from myself. <laughs> I was about um, to say, are you going to put yourself in? Like, yes, listen, right, I, right. no, at the time, obviously, Timmy Baker was yeah. there. And when I first came in, we had, um, like I said before, we had quite a few injuries yeah. at centre half. And Timmy played as a sort of a right uh, of a back three. Mm. So when I first joined, we played wing back. So I was, I was a right wing back. Timmy Baker was pushed in. But... It was, uh, Timmy was, was obviously the mainstay as a right back. Yeah. Um, so fit um, mm. and just so, um, there was just everything about him. You know, he, he trained well, but he was so consistent in his, in his games. Uh, great lad. Also, when he wasn't in the team, you know, it, 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 you know great support. Yeah. Um, but. You know, Tim. Tim was was an excellent fullback. Yeah. Um, obviously, a different player to me, but was was um, you know backed up many games. And I know, I believe he was Bill's first signing, and I don't think he could have picked the better nah, one. Nah, nah. Um, and I know Potsy. Potsy played at right back at certain times, but um, I've sort of pushed Potsy central because he he played most of his football with me anyway. At, um, as a centre half. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and done that excellent. So yeah, I'd have to say Timmy Baker yeah, at, at Timmy. right back. Exactly, yeah. and obviously he was he was a he, he, they when we when he left the club obviously he left to QPR didn't he with, with um, that's right not bad but yeah I say yeah Tim I mean that's yeah I mean to be honest it's like now we're watching now we're obviously you haven't got any live football we're, everyone's watching all the old season reviews and stuff and yeah. you forget how many goals Tim Breaker like scored there's a couple quite he scored quite a few and it's like. I've got his new family. Yeah, I think he was really. an all round. I mean, he was he was because he was so athletic. Yeah, you know, right. he could join an attack. He was obviously, you know, physically he was strong. Mm. So you know, defensively he was good. He was quick, uh, decent in the air. He was he was you know a great character. And like I say, yeah. he's just so consistent. Yeah, that's the right consistency exactly. Right, okay, we'll put we'll put Timmy on the right. So we're gonna have Potts in the centre then. Yeah, I have got to put Potts in now. Yeah. Um, you know, again, five foot eight, something, um, like something like that. I might even be, you know, being kind to him there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Potsy played, you know, at centre half, and um, again, model of consistency. Mm. Um, yeah, what well, he lacked in height, but um, just read the game so well. Uh, very rarely got caught out, mm. and um, you know, he'd done the what he'd done. He'd done the very basics really well didn't complicate his game and no. uh, again so steady and again that calming influence yes which yeah. um which you need and the way obviously that we played at the time um yeah he was he was he was obviously a mainstay of the team uh, yeah. throughout his time once he broke into the first team he was you know he was there and like i say again he could play right back you know center half um you could put him really you could have played him anywhere and mm. it, it, it'd still be that, job, that, yeah. that consistent player, yeah. Yeah, and again, a lovely, quiet lad off the pitch. Um, but uh, nice, n- nice fellow, really good teammate. Yeah, and never a hair out of place. Always said that yeah, beautiful... Yeah, sickening. Sick yeah, exactly. Even more so for me now. <laughs> right, who's going to partner Potsy at centre-back then? You know? Well, this was a... Yeah, I, had to, I was thinking about this because um, mm. obviously Alvin and Gailey, um, both there and... It'll be yeah. later, obviously, Slavin and Mark Reaper came. Um, but I'd, I'd have to look at either Alvin or, or Tony. I'm, yeah. my, not a regret, but obviously I wish I had had the opportunity to play with both of them uh, when they were probably at their prime a few yeah. years earlier. They were both late in their careers. They both struggled with injuries as well, uh, probably more so Alvin. Mm. Um, but between the two, I'd, I'd, I'd slightly go, because we've got Potsy, I'd probably go with Alvin. Yeah, um, just for his leadership skills, mm. and um, again, he was he was um, a, a wise head. Um, he's had the stature, uh, yeah. he knows the game inside out. Yeah, um, and it and it was someone you looked up to. I, I very much did looked up to, sure. to Alvin. Um, obviously, his career was uh, was was fantastic. Uh, yeah. England international, you know, 
game after season after season for West Ham. And um, again, got on well with him off the pitch. Um, but he was, again, really fit, lean, as you, as you see him now. Mm, um, yeah. Looked after himself. Um, and like I say, it was just a shame that the injuries probably caught up with him. Sure. Um, yeah, yeah, no, totally. And as you said, just dependable, solid. You know what you're going to get. From a fan's perspective, when he, you know, you knew he was going to be a, a 7, 8 out of 10 every game. Yeah. And yeah. rarely made a mistake. And if it did, because he was trying so hard, the fans wouldn't get on his back. You know, and, and that's, that's obviously... For the for West, as, as you know, for yourself, Kelly, from a West Ham perspective, you know that's what they want, isn't it? They want yeah, no, absolutely. They're all and like I say, you know, later on, um, you know, I think and it was it was two signings from from Harry with um, with Slavin and, and Mark Reaper. Yeah, because both were excellent, um, yeah. excellent additions, and there was always that we knew that the the centre halves, you know, obviously were coming to an end. Uh, or towards the end of their careers, mm. uh, didn't particularly. I don't think we had anyone up. Unfortunately, Simon Webster, we signed, got injured quite quickly, yeah. uh, and couldn't couldn't fulfil that. So I think we're always looking for for them sort of players, and and both Reeps and and, and Slavin came in, um, and were excellent for the club. Yeah, you know, and two two really good signings. Yeah, um, and again, yeah, if I'd played maybe played longer with them, either of them two, then then yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I'll go with Alvin. Yeah, um, no worries. Yeah, definitely. That's good. All right, that's nice. Solid, solid back back five there, I think, including Ludo. Right, okay, let's go midfield. We'll, we'll try and keep it 4-4-2 four, because four, I'm, I'm, yeah. crap, I'm crap at video editing or anything. Uh, <laughs> right, let's go for the left wing. Who would have on the left wing then, Kenny? Um, there would be two players um, yeah. who I was really looking at, and that was um, uh, Mark Robson and, uh, and Stuart Slater. Mm. Um, I'm gonna go with with Chopper uh, with Stuart. Yeah, uh, I look back on especially you know them that season that the my first season at, at the club. Um, he was he obviously that was his final season. My first season was his last season really uh, before he moved uh, to Celtic. But um, he just had this uh, and looking back on footage, he just glided over a pitch mm. and I, and I know. Some of the older, you know, viewers, listeners will will obviously look at uh, Alan Devonshire, yeah. the way he glided and, and moved inside out. And Chopper was 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 probably a little bit more um, uh, tight to the ground, and but you could see that he could both he could go either way. Mm. Um, again, a very quiet lad, um, but loved football, loved the game, yeah. and he was one of the players that when we played. Like I say, on that first season, he's the one you'd want on on your five side team. Yeah, um, just really, just, just lovely to watch. You know, he, yeah. was, he, he, was, he was brilliant to watch, uh, pleasing on the eye. Uh, created loads of goals. Uh, created a couple of my my goals as well. Um, so, I think uh, Stuart Slater would just edge it. Um, but again, Mark Robson in, in that year, uh, the following season when we did go up. Mm. Uh, Mark Robson was was prominent in in our in mm. in us getting going up. Yeah, we played four four two with with Robbo on on one side, and we'll go on to the other player next on the, on the other side. But uh, they were really they were strong, had, had great seasons, and and a big reason why we did get promoted. Yeah, totally. All right, we'll go um, we'll go to the other wing. Yeah, then, so we we'll go Chopper. Yeah. Quite an easy. Well, I say an easy one, but uh, Kevin Keane. Yeah. Um, uh, I think anyone that played with Kev uh, would put him in there. Would it be in their top eleven? Yeah. Uh, just again, uh, someone who loved the game. Mm. Um, anyone who can remember watching him play, never shirt, always wanted the ball. Mm. Uh, didn't matter what the score line was, um, how he was playing, didn't bother him. Uh, always wanted to create, be created. Always wanted to look forward. Um, and again, was was a thoughtful, thoughtful player. Uh, I used to enjoy him playing in front of me. Or at times when I played in midfield, I remember playing one game and uh, I played centre midfield uh, with with Kev. Uh, so it was only there was me and him in the middle of the pitch, um, and it was just you know you just balance you just learn off him you balanced yeah. off him. Um, he had loads of energy, uh, and he's another one on a Friday when you'd had five other sides. Yeah. You just wished he was in your team because you knew you were going to win the game. Yeah, um, but it, yeah, he was he was excellent. Again, he had a massive season the year we went up. 
Mm. Definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. Lovely. Okay. Brilliant. All right. So we'll put, put Keen on, on the right. What about the middle? Who we go in the middle then, Kenny? Um, first one would be Bish. Yeah. Um, probably the, again, the, the most, um, I wouldn't say I, uh, underrated because I think a lot of players and supporters loved him, both, both yeah. at West Ham and Bournemouth, Man City, the clubs he's been at. Yeah. Everybody knew his worth. Mm. Um, unbelievable character. Brilliant character. Um, got on well with him straight away. And uh, again, looking back on, on not just his football, but he, he had everything. Yeah. Um, and, and he used to take, used to take some stick uh, from opposing fans uh, later on from some from the home fans didn't bother him he just got on and and everybody knew how good he was yeah uh, brilliant character around the place great in the dressing room um training ground bundles of energy loves um and just a someone who you'd want in your in your dressing room and in your yeah. team uh, and like i say top footballer you know yeah. play off both feet always wanted the ball again um made us play uh, didn't didn't shirk anything. Um, had a full range of passing, scored goals. Um, yeah, he was an excellent footballer and and a, and a top bloke. Top, top bloke. bloke. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's that's what comes across. You know, as you said, he's a he seemed to be a real good like uh, guy to have around the team in the yeah. dressing room. Like, it seems to be the first, you know, it seems to be right old giggle as well. And you yeah, know, you see his interviews and stuff. And and he's obviously, you know, he's got a podcast with, the, <laughs> with his with his, with his boys. That's right. Home, which is quite yeah. funny. Which is really good. Right, okay. Yeah. Who's going to partner Bish in the middle then, Kenny? Um, well, again, I think there was, there was two, two, two slightly different players, but yeah. um, I've, I've got Martin Allen and, and John Monker. Um, I'm going to sway towards Monks, um, even though I think a lot, of, a lot of people didn't feel they could play together, yeah. uh, Monks and Bish. But again, Monks was very similar. Had a little bit more aggression in him. Yeah. Um, um, a fantastic footballer played against him a lot um and and then when he came to the club so you know how good he was mm, mm. and uh when he did come into the club uh you you realize under under his nose unbelievable character as well um again you know every minute he came in he lightened the place up he was yeah. he was definitely he energized the place uh, along with with bish um great character and again another one that you know, you'd sit in the dressing room and you look around and you're looking at the Julians and like I say, with, with Bish, uh, Monks, you always felt you had a chance. Yeah. yeah. Felt that something would happen. Um, yeah. And he was, he was great at getting players up, uh, getting up for the game. Um, and again, you know, stories, that, that every, I think they're some of the stories that come out of Monks and uh, away from, from football and, or away from the pitch, should I say, you know, <laughs> everybody hears about him, but the, he was just a, a proper character. Um, yeah. And unfortunately I think them, them characters are missing from the game now. Totally. Um, rightly or wrongly. I um, mm. don't know whether they could survive in, in, in today's sort of social media no, no, frenzy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I look back on times like that and that's what made the, the dressing room. Yeah. And again, you know, your memories of, of my time at West Ham, a lot of it is 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 how the, them players made you feel and how yeah. the, what that environment was like. And they were they were you know prominent figures. And again, I, I touch on Martin Allen. Yeah, you know exactly the same. An absolute you know didn't know what he was going to do. Didn't know you know what he'd, he'd be turning out. He'd turn up into training the cravat, um, <laughs> you know, and come training. But again, trained really well. Yeah. Unbelievable footballer. Again, played against him. Uh, you knew his worth, mm. but didn't quite know just how good he was until you no. played with him. Yeah. Um, and, a, you know, very, again, fit, scored, scored some great goals. I remember the goal at Arsenal uh, yeah. towards the end of the season when we won there. Uh, and again, he, was, he, he enjoyed his football. Mm. And that, for me, that was, that was, that's important. I look at it, you know, obviously in my role now, but I look at it where, you know, I want kids, I want, players enjoying football they've got to have a love for the game yeah uh, and all them players that i've mentioned already they all loved it they loved the playing they love <laughs> they love training they love playing whether you won or lost uh and again they every single one of them loved the club yeah so uh it was brilliant for me and uh yeah two big characters yeah uh but I'll, I'll sway with monks 
uh, just slightly because I'd love to see him and Bish playing together. Yeah. Oh yeah, that'd be so. Much. And and and. and particularly those two, an unsur- you know, surprising amount of skill. You know, they're both really skillful players oh, God, as well. Yeah. And as you said yeah. with John, John would, John, you know, John would take the first yellow for the team. Uh, whether he started or not, doesn't matter for John. But he was, and that again, was, he was brilliant, wasn't he? I loved him. He was yeah, great. again, it, it, you know, it, I think that everyone bought into, you know, John loved the club, yeah. you know, Monks, even though he, you know, he grew up in uh, Tottenham down the road. Um, spent some years at Swindon, had some yeah. success there, but he really kicked on at West Ham, and yeah. I think it was a perfect fit for for him and, and for the club. Yeah, no, I agree. Brilliant, love it. It's brilliant, Kenny. This is, this is like all. This is like my era. So it's like, oh, it's absolutely <laughs> brilliant. I love it. Right, who are we gonna have up front then? Up front, um, I've got to put Frank in. Yeah. Um, obviously, I was there when his when his second time that he came yeah. back. Um, Character wise, uh, personality, uh, again, loads of energy, just energized the place. Um, everybody knew about his, you know, um, his social life. Yeah. But it didn't get in the way, you know, no. trained, it didn't miss training. It did, you know, there wasn't, um, there wasn't problems with him. Mm. Um, not that I'd, you know, not major ones. I bet I'm sure the managers had, I bet Bill and Harry had, had some issues with him, um, at times, but. Um, again, but on the pitch, um, unbelievable finisher. Yeah. And along with, uh, I'd, I'd say the top finisher I've been, uh, I was at the club with would have been Clive Allen. Yeah. Um, I thought he was, he was the best finisher uh, that I've played with. Mm. Um, but I think as an all round player um, and someone in the team, again, who gave everything, um, You'd have to go with Frank, uh, and again, I think what summed him up was was obviously his last game for the club um, at home to that. I think it was Southampton, yeah. Um, and he scores a hat trick, you know, in in the second half, and I just that just sums Frank up. You yeah. know, he's he's a, he's a legend at the club. Everyone speaks well of him, and um, he he made my time at the, at the at the football club enjoyable. Brilliant. Definitely. And who's he who's he going to partner up front then? Um, well, we had a, there was a few, but um, I look and uh, let me have a check. Um, it would be someone again who was maybe underrated, definitely yeah. not within the club, but Trevor Morley. Yeah. And uh, Nigel was a fantastic footballer, um, knew the game, knew how to, how to play the game. Great target man, could, had, um, could basically do everything as a forward. Mm. Wasn't the quickest. Uh, wasn't the tallest, but he was strong. He was intelligent, scored goals. Um, again, along with Bish, big characters, uh, different, quieter. Um, mm. Get on well. I got on well with Trevor, and uh, fortunate as enough as well. When he 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 left and went to Reading uh, with Jimmy Quinn, who was a manager at Reading at the time. I went there on loan and played with Trevor again at, at Reading. He was exactly the same. Um, massive brought so much to the team um, and I know we you know we wouldn't have gone up without him no, that season that's true that's true um, but I, I know that he's he, you know he was a big player for, for West Ham uh, yeah. well thought of in the dressing room um, again a, a super character really dry humour um, funny funny bloke um, so really I look at that that 11 yeah um, we've got some calmness at the back yes Probably definitely take Julian out of it yeah yeah um, but then the further you go forward, the little bit more extrovert the players yeah. get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Love you it. See where I'm going with it. I can see it definitely. Brilliant. Kelly, it's been absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much for, for no, taking pleasure. the time. I know, I know obviously you're busy because you're, you're doing, obviously you're still, still in the game. I know you're working yeah. for the club. We won't talk about Go on, you can, you can name them. <clears throat> Mill, but no matter. it's all right it's fine it's all right but everyone you know billy bonds Mill, no so, listen you know, so there's, there's, there's been a lot of connection between there's been a lot of connections clubs. a lot of connections and, yeah and uh but yeah no thanks for having me on and Absolute like i say I, I think it's um it's always nice to to bring back some memories yeah to look back uh, at things don't mind speaking about it and it's it's um, no, exactly. you know it's, it's been a pleasure coming on mate thanks thank, for thank you me. and thank you to everyone else for, for viewing obviously and watching please you know what to do like subscribe share whatever you want to do and until next time guys take care thanks everyone bye-bye cheers <laughs>